Hello and welcome again to another one of our training videos. We've been following through leadership, understanding what the skills and qualities are that are needed to be effective, successful leaders. The one we're going to talk about today is probably one we're all used to, one we've all experienced, one that we get tired of. It's going to be the subject today of effective meetings. I'm sure many of you, like me, have been to hundreds, if not thousands, of meetings in your life and your career. They can be terrible, they can be boring, but some can be very successful and very impactful. So today it's not just about meetings. Anybody can do meetings. We have meetings on Zoom, on Teams. We have meetings on conference calls, the telephone, for those who remember what those are, to have conference calls. Or it could simply be physical, which is really what I'm talking about today, but it could also be at a distance. If you're engaged with what we're gonna talk about now, then feel free to like, to share, to comment. We'd love to engage with you and continue the dialogue around this. Subscribe to the uh, website, to the YouTube videos, and really share with us in this journey. My name is Chris Igwe. I have 35 years plus experience of creating, growing, and leading international teams across different countries, lived in five different countries, and worked with teams across Europe, Middle East, and Africa, as well as those in the US. Effective meetings. The way we're going to look at this is through before, the during, and the after. Because you see, in order to lead meetings effectively, and these are, by the way, meetings that you are going to lead. There may be meetings that other people have you can't control, although there are ways in which you can manage to have a successful outcome to that meeting as well. But I'm assuming these are meetings that you are organizing yourself. So before, and again, some of these things may seem simple and straightforward to you, but believe me, with thousands of meetings that I've seen, if not tens of thousands over my career, they do not happen in this structured manner. Once again, leadership is all about taking control, planning, preparing, organizing with the results and a focus in mind. So before you get started, you have to decide on the agenda. What is it that needs to be discussed? What are the important items? So you start with those, and then at the very end, you get to any other business. So map out the agenda, the number of people who go to meetings as leaders, and you just say, we'll talk about this, talk about that, and it's this a general conversation. Set out the agenda, make sure that those who are going to be at the meeting, who, by the way, you will be inviting, they will be included in that agenda list. If there's anything they want to contribute to the meeting, make sure that you include them and include those subjects in the meeting. So set the agenda and you set the timing. How long should the meeting be? Now, as we all know, I hope, just because a meeting is long or longer does not mean it is most effective or efficient. It's about how you manage the process. But you want to set out the timing. How long is the meeting going to be? When should people turn up? And the final one is information. The best meetings are the ones where everybody is prepared. So if in setting the agenda, there are those who are going to speak or you have a topic on there that you want to communicate about and there is information, data, surveys, whatever it happens to be, make sure that information is circulated before the meeting and expect everybody to have read it. So you don't get to the meeting and then start sharing and discussing and wasting valuable time. So set the agenda very clearly Set the timing of the meeting itself, and it could be regular meetings also. So if it's a regular meeting, make sure it's in the calendar. If it's a one-off, that's okay as well. And then you have the information that needs to be shared. Once you've done all those, we then come to the other important section. So what do you do during the meeting? 
Rem remembering that you're focusing on if efficiency, effectiveness, clarity. Well, firstly, you are leading it, okay? If somebody else needs to speak at a certain time, that's okay. But it is your meeting, you called it, you are leading and driving it forward. So you need to establish your authority. You need to establish that they are all there with the purpose of discussing whatever the agenda items are and coming out with a conclusion at the end. Here by timing, I mean not only start on time, but it also means finish on time. But in between that, if people are contributing to the agenda or there is an item to be discussed, you give it the appropriate amount of time to be discussed. If there's a really important strategic conversation, for example, you don't put it at the end and you don't give it five minutes. If it's an hour's meeting, let's say, the strategic conversation or the business or financial should always be way up at the beginning because they are the important elements and then they work down in order of priority. I know some people sometimes flip that, that's okay. Maybe they want a bigger discussion later on when some of the more formal things have been discussed. That's up to you to decide, you are leading it. Timing is important. Timing is also important from a leadership point of view for people to turn up to meetings on time. It is not acceptable for them to be late and it's even worse if they don't let you know. Little anecdote in one of the companies I worked with, my team had a difficulty getting in for the Monday morning meetings. It went from 8, 8.30 to 9. They couldn't do 9 either. So eventually I made it 9.30. At 9.30 or 9.15, 9.15, I expected everybody to be in the room. And those that weren't, and once one or two over time tried it, they weren't, and they lost out on business for the rest of the week, which was part of their financial benefit. They understood that, it hurt them. Those who did it, didn't do it again. It still happened from time to time, but you set what your expectations are of your team and punctuality is really, really important. It shows respect to you, it shows respect for others, and it shows respect for themselves as well. Engagement. During the meeting, it's important that everybody is engaged in the conversation. They're not invited there just to participate. All those who are there have a role and you want that role to be fulfilled. There are those who are going to be more chatty. There are going to be those who are maybe aggressive. There are going to be those who talk a lot. There are those who don't say much. You want to make sure, because even those who don't say much, you want to make sure that they are engaged in the conversation. You do so through the moderating process. You are moderating, you're leading, but you're moderating. Moderating means that you are ensuring the fluidity of the meeting. So those who are quiet, but you know they have something to say, you make sure they say it. You make sure they're engaged. The one thing you don't want to have happen is this meeting is held and those who felt they wanted to say something and not able to or didn't, and then they come and moan and complain after the meeting. It has to get said in the meeting. In terms of moderating or indeed in leading, one of the important things is note taking. Notes need to be taken. Now I've often had the privilege of my PA being in most of the meetings, not all necessarily. Whether it's your PA or somebody else you delegate to, somebody takes a meeting so that you can talk. You take your own notes, you take your own meeting notes as well but maybe the big points and items and whoever else is taking the minutes picks up on the process, the systems, the information being shared. So that's all very important. Leading, that's your role, you have to hold, own it. Timing, very important, start, finish and in between. Engagement, make sure everybody's committed, talking, discussing and moderating, looking at body language, looking at those who are engaged, those who are not. And by the way, in here, of course, mobile phones. Mobile phones either have to be on silent, preferably, vibrate, not so good, unless they put it on a surface that, that doesn't vibrate the table, but they're not to consult their phones whilst they're in a meeting. That has, has to be an absolute rule. That's during, and then after. After is maybe a little simpler, but equally important. People think, oh, the meeting's happened, we all go off in different directions, and that's it. Well, no. You need to make sure the minutes are drafted, come out. You as the leader review those draft minutes, make sure it is what was discussed. 
You have action items against each one. So who was supposed to follow through on something, make sure they are included in the minutes and they know. And then circulate the minutes, of course. Make sure everybody who was at the meeting gets a copy. And it may be that your boss, for example, or someone else gets copies of those minutes. So the circulation of the minutes are critically important. Very often this gets left out and this is mayhem afterwards where no minutes are taken, not everybody is informed of the same thing, so everybody takes their own notes. That is a disaster waiting to happen. That allows people the freedom not to complete the actions that they were supposed to carry out or pretend they didn't know about it. So once the minutes are out, you then review and monitor the actions because with the minutes, generally those actions have dates or times. It may be to be done by the next meeting, that's okay. But it may be this needs to be done in between or somebody didn't have information at the meeting, they need to bring it later on. Actions need to be monitored, followed through and checked off and you do that. That's your role as well to review and make sure the actions have been completed effectively. So that is the process, it's about what you do to prepare, so the before, the after, during, and the after. Now the key thing about meetings overall, which I want to finish on is, put it through a process in your mind. Like I said, we are over meeting. It's not like we need another meeting, but some are absolutely necessary. I know some people who have very short meetings, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, You've got to be talking fast and maybe more regular meetings or maybe you trust those who are doing it to get the jobs done and therefore you don't need to follow through as much. But let's just assume in a standard work environment or business environment, meetings are needed to make sure everybody's on the same wavelength. So you have to ask yourself, what is the necessity for this meeting? Does it have to be a meeting? What is its purpose? What do you want to achieve through that meeting once you've had that. What is the optimal or ideal length, both, both based on your timetable and schedule and based on other people and maybe those who travel, um, so when are they all going to be in the same place? And then inevitably, and really important, who needs to attend? The number of meetings that many of us have been to, and there are maybe 10, 20, 30 people on the phone with these Zoom and video calls these days, you have way more people on the, on the calls. Who really needs to attend? And not just attend, but contribute in the meeting and to execute whatever it is afterwards. So this is the kind of test you need to take through in your mind. And then you'll be surprised the number that will be reduced significantly because maybe there is no necessity. Maybe an email, a memo, a quick phone call, one-on-one, -on -one, yes, okay, it takes more time, but it saves everybody time. You can get it done. The purpose, what is the outcome that you want to achieve? Why does it need to be all those people who are called together to be in that meeting? And then of course, how long? So if any of this has spoken to you, which I hope it has on effective meetings, then please, as I said, like, share, Share your comments as well, because many people have different ways of doing successful meetings. Love to know what your thoughts and ideas are. And uh, most importantly, also subscribe to our channel so that you can follow our other videos that come through. And um, we appreciate your time, appreciate your listening, and look forward to connecting with you. Thank you.